Good morning, everyone, and welcome to your Miracle Mindset Monday for this week. So remember, with our Miracle Mindset Monday, this is just a generalized reading for the week. There are no personalized readings. If you are interested in your own personalized reading, then you can always go visit my website, awakeningmiracles.org. And even if you're not interested in getting a reading, I have a lot of free information on my website that you can access, like my different vlogs and blogs that have different information on how you can really use a lot of the principles of spirituality in a practical way in your life to really start to help you to have the life that you deserve and the life that you can have, which is happiness and joy and all the wonderful things of life. So with all of that said for this week, I thought it'd be really great if we kind of did things a little, I guess you could say backwards. So we have the full moon uh, on Halloween. And we all know the full moon is all about release. Well, we are also, good morning, Brandy. Thanks for joining. Thanks for being here. We are also in the midst of, hi, Mary Beth. Thanks for joining. Thanks for being here. Uh, we are also in the midst of, you know, a Mercury, a Mercury retrograde, and we have entered into Scorpio season. So this is all, of, and also the moon uh, will be, I believe, uh, trining uh, Pisces. So this is all about allowing ourselves to really see some of the subconscious blocks that we have put in front of us, in front of our own way, that's kind of stopping us from really moving forward. And so I thought for this week's Miracle Mindset Monday, it would be a wonderful idea if we first went to the wisdom of the hidden realms, really showing us, okay, what is it that, you know, is blocking us as a collective? What can we collectively release? What do we collectively need to let go of? Then we can go to the enchanted map. And the enchanted map is kind of give us is going to give us some direction on where we need to go. Then I thought we could always use some beautiful divine compassion from the Kuan Yin Oracle. And then we will end it all with a beautiful affirmation from the Oracle of the Angels. So I'm really excited about seeing what beautiful energies that we're working with and how we can really begin to release that which no longer serves us. Now, before we get into the reading, when I say releasing what no longer serves us, releasing is more about saying, I no longer hold value for this. That's what release means to me. It means that I'm saying, you know what? I see this, I recognize this, I acknowledge this. And as I do that process, I see that it no longer holds value for me in my life. And then I'm able and willing to let it go because I've come to the recognition that this no longer is helping me. It's actually a hindrance to me. So that's just something I also wanted to put out there when it comes to releasing. Releasing to me means acknowledging and processing and then realizing that that belief or that thought pattern or that Enneagram no longer holds any value for me. And once I have released the value, said, okay, you don't have value for me anymore. It's a lot easier to let it go because you wouldn't keep a lamp that cannot light a room. You wouldn't do it. You would throw it away because it can't, it can't do its job. And so that's really what we're doing as we are releasing. We're letting go of what no longer holds value. We're letting go of those, <laughs> the old lamps in our lives that can no longer illuminate a room. Oh, be okay, beautiful. Wow, I love it. Okay, so just one more card, please. <laughs> okay, or two more cards. That's okay. All right, so let's look what we have here. So our very first card for this week is the Hungry Ghosts, Obsession, 
scarcity consciousness, attachment. Okay, so this week we're really asked to look at these different uh, aspects. Where are we obsessing about things? Where are we in our own scarcity consciousness? Where are we looking on a lot of lack? And that doesn't mean just lack of money. Where are we looking on lack of love? Where are we looking on a lack of security? Where are we looking on a lack of self-confidence? Looking at those areas, looking at where are we attaching? Where are we saying that my happiness has to come in this way? Or where am I looking and saying, okay, this is where you know, I have to be. Where are we attaching to certain ideas and not allowing ourselves to release? Then we have the well watcher, wisdom, power of the divine. So we're really looking at, okay, so I've looked at my attachments. Where am I saying it has to be my will be done instead of thine will be done? And this is really, really important because, you know, there's that old adage when man plans God laughs. God's not laughing because he's saying you're stupid. God's laughing or the universe is laughing because it says you're thinking too small. You are thinking far too small. You know, you are thinking at, let's say that the universe, which it does, it works at a level 10, but you're only working at a level 5.5 and being like, well, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, it's not terrible, but it's not great. And the universe laughs and says, you know, my dear child, I want, I've already given you everything and I want you to have everything. So, you know, we limit ourselves. So really looking, where am I saying, where do I have an agenda? Where am I saying it's my plan instead of the divine plan? Then we go here to the lady of the gift, generosity, receiving, but also looking at where are we withholding? Where are we withholding love? Where are we withholding, um, yeah, where are we withholding love? Looking at that and really being aware of where we are not being able to receive as well as give. Good morning, Karen. Good morning, Noreen. Good morning, Yvette. Good morning, good morning, everyone. And really looking at that as well. Where are we not able to, you know, where are we giving but not receiving? Where are we also withholding? Because there are areas of our life that we are great in giving. You know, maybe you're great at giving advice. Maybe you're great at giving money. Maybe you're great at giving love. Maybe you're great at giving healing. But maybe you withhold a little bit as well, but not maybe from others. Maybe it's from yourself. And where are you giving but not receiving? You know, uh, and a beautiful story about that is we, uh, I had to go pick up my sister from work. And she texts me and she's like, hey, there's a grandma here who needs your help. And I was like, what? And so I called her and I said, what are you talking about? And she said, well, there was this old lady and she pulled up and she asked me if I knew where Noblesville was. And she and my sister said, I thought we were in Noblesville. And, you know, I thought, wow, you know, <laughs> that's kind of crazy. And so I get there and I'm taught and I, you know, I asked the lady, you know, how can I help her? And she was like, well, I just don't know where I am and I need to find this place. And I said, ma'am, you know what? No worries. I got you. And she, I said, why don't you go ahead and I'll just take you where you want to go. I'll plug it into my GPS and I'll take you. So, you know, I drive, you know, it's only 10 minutes away. I drive her there or she follows me and you know, she offers me gas money. You know, it was only 10 minutes away. Wasn't super far. But instead of saying my agenda, which would have been, it's 10 minutes, it's not a big deal. Like, no worries. I said, you know, Spirit, what would you have me do here? And Spirit said, you know, take the gift. It is a joyful expression. I said, okay. So I, I said, thank you so much. Didn't even look how much she gave me. I thought, you know, $5. I look, she gave me $20. And I was like, wow, you know, thank you so much. You know, I felt very blessed by that. But it's because I was willing to receive it instead of just being like, no, no, no. You know, we all do that. There are times that spirit says, no, you know, it, it's not your job. Just do, you did your job, done. And there are other times that spirit says, it's okay, receive. Like this is a gift. It's a gift of joy. And so we have to be really willing here to look at our attachments 
of saying, where am I obsessed with people seeing me as overly humble? Or where am I obsessed with not being willing to receive gifts that are given to me, not out of obligation, but out of joy? So really looking at that and then also looking at the reverse of that, where am I not willing to give gifts? Where am I not willing to be joyful in the gift giving? Meant to be flying on Wednesday. Oh, sorry, Tracy, this is not a, uh, there's, this isn't uh, for private readings. This is just a generalized reading for the week. So then we have the spirit whisperer, divine guidance, higher knowing. So once again, we have entered into that Scorpio mansion, into the Scorpio season, if you will. And this is really heightening our intuition, asking spirit more and more. And, you know, how beautiful that we have this opportunity to continuously ask spirit for its guidance and really listen and looking for, you know, if there's red flags, we need to be willing to notice those red flags. And so then we also have the sacred union, partnership, romance, but it's in the reverse position. So this is really saying that we have to take a look at our partnerships and our romances. Now, the beautiful thing about this card is it's not just speaking about interpersonal relationships. Now, is that one thing? 100%. Like it is talking about that. But remember, everything is a relationship. You have a relationship with money. You have a relationship with food. You have a relationship with time. You have a relationship with, you know, other ideas and things. Looking at those relationships as well and saying, okay, where can I bring this into harmony? Or where does this relationship with this idea, with this situation, with this person, with this place, with this thing, no longer serve me? Like really looking at that really deeply this week so we can actually have a divine relationship, a holy relationship, instead of a special relationship. That's something we really want to steer away from is the special relationship. The special relationship is basically a little box that you build for yourself that says, you know, uh, I can only be with this one person or this one person completes me. Remember, no one completes you. You are already whole and complete onto yourself. What that other person does is they may accentuate, they may illuminate, they may be a wonderful partner on that journey, but they will never, they can never complete you because you are already whole and complete upon yourself. That's why for me personally, I'm not someone who puts a lot of stock into twin flame relationships because twin flame is saying that there's another part of your soul that's missing and you have to find it. You are already a whole and complete soul. There is nothing that you are missing. So now let's go to the enchanted map. And we're going to see what other guidance comes out for this week from the enchanted map. Okay, so let's see what beautiful energies we have. Of course. Okay, so our very first card from this deck is the Bone Collector. Okay, the Bone Collector. And her message is, is I already have everything for you. I have held it for you since the beginning of time. And, you know, she's really holding on to our talents, our abilities. And she's saying, all you have to do is come within. And as you come within, I have your gifts for you and I'm waiting to give them to you. But you have to be willing to kind of step into the unknown which is stepping outside of your comfort zone so that you can really allow things that no longer serve you to kind of come apart so that you can be more wide open. Because, you know, all too often there is this sense 
that, you know, once again, it's about limitation. You're not a limited being. You are an unlimited being. That's what you are. That's what you've always been. It's only you that limits you with your own beliefs, your own ideas. That's what limits you. And we have to be willing to kind of step into that unknown and, you know, really trust our intuition so that we can say, okay, you know, these are the things that are coming apart. It's okay that they're coming apart because as they come apart, they're actually leading us to be more open so that we can receive more. You cannot pick up a diamond you see on the ground if you have a handful of rocks. You're going to have to drop one of the rocks so that you can pick up the diamond. And that's all that's really being asked of us is be willing to look at your hand that's full of rocks and say, okay, you know what? This rock doesn't serve me. I don't need this one anymore. I don't need this one or this one. Now let me pick up this beautiful diamond and, you know, let me continue to walk. So then we have number 15. And I'm actually going to read from the book from num for number 15. I'm going to read the little quote that she says above it. So number 15 is you are capable and you are competent. And that is the one ring circus. You are completely capable and competent. And so one thing I will never, ever forget. It was some guidance given to me by the beautiful, the one, the only Sonia Choquette. Do not que or stop questioning your competency and start questioning your confidence. All of us need to be willing to do that, to question our confidence, not our competency, because all too often that's what we're doing. We're questioning, you know, who am I to do this? Who am I to do that? No, we don't need to do that anymore. We need to say, who am I not? Who am I not to deserve to win $10 trillion? Who am I not to go and write a book? Who am I not to, you know, start a podcast? Who am I not to start helping people? Who am I not to start doing readings? Who am I not to start doing channelings? Who am I not to uh, go on the El Camino Santiago, you know, which is a, a pilgrimage? Who am I not to do that? Instead of, well, you know, I'm not this and I'm not that. No, we must question our confidence not our competency. You are capable of anything and everything because that is what you are. You are a limitless being. No limits are put upon you, only the ones you place upon yourself. Now, we're also going to look at the bone collector and see if there's the other quote that comes from that one, which is, you are whole and you have everything you need within you. So once again, she's holding all the gifts. She's telling you exactly where it all is. And then we have this little bonus card here, which is the sun dancer, joyful activity, celebration of life and abundance. So once we really realize, you know, that we have all the gifts we need within, we step into the unknown, we let go of what is coming apart, we become more wide open, we start to question our confidence, not our competency. This is the end result. This is the end result. Joy, happiness. We're doing what we love and loving what we do. So now let's go to the Kuan Yin Oracle. Now I will tell you with the Kuan Yin Oracle, I always read directly from the book because it's beautiful channeled messages and I couldn't say them any better myself. So we're seeing just one card that the Divine Mother would like to give us for this week. As we begin to look at our attachments, we begin to let them go. We begin to just, let's see. So we have, okay, so we have two cards. Okay, I lied. We have three cards. I like when I ask for something and then you know what? Spirit says, I know what's best. So our three cards are first to the celestial mountain, number 41, number 41. So I'll read the little channeled message here. There are times when divine energy is needed to help us achieve a spiritual goal. 
when you do not feel completely in control of your destiny, the divine is usually gifting you with an opportunity to reach for assistance and invoke divine power, to call to the celestial mountain so that you might be gifted with a far superior outcome. Your permission to begin are to your permission to beings that love you unconditionally to offer you help is an expression of spiritual empowerment. You empower those forces to come to your aid and help you manifest the life of purpose and destiny. And so really what I like to say when it comes to that card, hi, Nicole, thanks for joining you know, when it comes to this celestial mountain, it's really an invitation to say, spirit, I don't know what to do. And being willing to release your agenda and say, you know what? My agenda isn't to get this car. My agenda isn't to get this money. My agenda isn't to get this client. My agenda isn't to do this or to do that. What my agenda now is, my goal is peace. I invite all the divine forces. I invite my angels, my guides. That's it. I'm inviting them not to get me what I think I want, but I invite them to help me come back into peace, which then leads us into the turquoise lotus mother number 42. Turquoise Lotus Mother brings precious healing to you now. Allow yourself to be lifted out of the struggle, beloved one. And old patterns are finally in their death thralls. Something that has weighed heavily on you from your past. This can be one of the most testing times. Allow something to be let go. Just when it seems to be demanding your time, focus and attention. Yet do not doubt you have actually learned the lessons it required of you and now are being blessed with an opportunity to receive that karmic healing. So, you know, once again, it is this beautiful invitation to say, okay, once I have let go of what no longer serves me and I have stepped in and said, you know what, spirit, I don't know. My goal is peace. All right, now that healing begins. And as that healing begins, we have the dance of the butterfly queen, number five. Beautiful number five. And we all know butterflies represent rebirth. So, a pure heart and sincere love attracts divine grace. With the grace of Kuan Yin, the butterfly queen, that which was impossible becomes possible. For caterpillars to winged creatures of delight. You cannot restrain the divine grace ordained no matter how much, no matter how incredible it may seem to be. Whatever has been troubling you or whatever has been inspiring you, allow grace to infuse the situation or the dream so that it may unfold in divine perfection. Allow the butterfly queen to dance. She will bring healing and grace into life and situations now. Beloved one, with the lightness of step and grace in her heart. So how absolutely beautiful. So our first set of cards told us what it is that we are really looking at this week. We're looking at our attachments. We're looking at our obsessions. We're looking at our scarcity consciousness. We're looking at where we're saying my will be done instead of thine will be done. We're looking at where it is that we have a hard time receiving. Where are we withholding? We're looking also at where are we not asking spirit to help us? And where are we asking spirit to help us? And where are we feeling like we're not getting that help? Then we're also looking at our relationships. And remember, everything is a relationship. Everything. So we're really looking at that, but we're also looking at our interpersonal relationships. As we begin to do that, we need to realize, once again, when it comes to relationships, there's no one to complete you. You are already whole and complete onto yourself. The, this other person only accentuates you know, your wholeness as you accentuate their wholeness. They are someone to journey with, not someone to journey for. And so then we have the bone collector and she tells us, oh, you are perfectly capable. You have everything you need within you. 
then we step into the unknown, which means, you know, really kind of saying, I don't know what to do here. And stepping into that, stepping into outside of your comfort zone, as you do, we see things, certain things start to come apart. And that's okay because it's leaving us wide open. And as we are wide open, we really get to question our confidence, not our competency. And as we do that, we really get to have this joyful celebration. And then we're having spirit once again come forward and say with the celestial mountain, put aside what you think you think and what you think you know and ask me for my help. As you do that, you receive this beautiful healing. As that beautiful healing happens, we get this beautiful transformation and we get to have grace really come into our lives and really begin to guide us and help us in miraculous, divine, beautiful ways if we're willing. So then we're going to go to the Oracle of the Angels, our last deck for today. And we're just going to see what beautiful affirmations are going to help us with all of these beautiful energies that we're working with for this week. Remember that, you know, this may seem like it is terrible and it's awful and it's, oh my God, I just can't. And that's okay because you want to know what part of you that is. Hi, Kristen. Thanks for joining. Glad to give you that confirmation. That part of you is the ego and the ego only lives in the past and it only lives for and that's just where it lives it lives in the past it lives for the drama and you know it's literally the melodrama it goes through and what we're asked to do is as we're looking at these different aspects that are coming up for us to look at it's not Ugh, more shadow work oh my god like haven't i done enough believe me i've been there too but when we step back and we get this beautiful opportunity to be the observer and say, you know what? I, instead of I am this, I am that, I notice. I'm noticing this. And, you know, as I'm noticing this, I don't think I really want it anymore. Instead of making it this big, drawn out process. If you want to make it that, you are more than welcome to. But I'd much rather have a easier time of it and the best way to do that is just to be the observer is to observe not absorb is to not attach to the idea okay do i have an idea that maybe you're really big on the twin flame thing and you've been looking for your twin flame and you're like oh my god i just want to find them i know they're out there somewhere and you know you have all of this and you have all of this different knowledge and and stuff about it but then when you kind of step back and you observe it, and you kind of look at it and say, wow, wait a minute. I'm saying that I'm looking for someone else to complete me. Now I'm saying that there's another part of me that's missing. But I'm already told I'm a limitless being. And I am also told that I am already whole, I'm already whole and healed. And now I'm saying that I'm not by this. Is this helping me? To attract somebody or is it really the ego saying search out here for someone to complete you which will never happen it just can't it cannot happen because the ego will always lead you these little breadcrumbs and it's like putting a carrot in front of a donkey the donkey's never going to get that carrot and you are never going to get that carrot either until you realize you know what I'm going to put down the stick that I've been putting in front of myself. I'm going to put it down. I'm done with it. I'm done chasing after what I think I want. And I'm really ready to look within and find out that everything I've been searching for isn't out there, but it's all within me. It's already there. It's my job simply to access it. That's it. So now let's go to... Uh, let's go to the Oracle of the Angels. Yes. Ah, 
beautiful okay so our first card and i always read directly from the book for these as well just because i haven't memorized them all and it's beautiful affirmations so our first card number 36 the source of life the source of all life is within me and with me and all around me i am embraced by a great love that fills my being and brings me peace so a beautiful invitation to remember that you are never alone to remember that you are surrounded by love itself why are you surrounded by love itself because you are love that's what you are your love and that's why you're surrounded by the source of all things which is love then we have card number 32, card number 32. And that beautiful affirmation is moving towards the light. I find the hidden blessing in each of my challenges. And I don't like to say challenges. For me, I like to say opportunities for growth because that's really what a challenge is. It's an opportunity for growth. So I find a hidden blessing in each of my opportunities for growth. I am forever progressing along my path beautiful and then we have card number 23 which is learning card number 23 which is learning i choose to learn from my experiences and always take away a gift or a little insight to further my understanding life always brings me what's best for my growth i trust in life and welcome all experiences with wisdom absolutely beautiful so no matter what it is we're going through let's be willing to find that blessing let's be willing to see everything as that opportunity for growth because life in its essence is what you we are love life can be love and so life is not about suffering it's not about yeah life isn't about suffering Life is about living and because you are eternal life, life is eternal. It may not be eternal within the physical form, but it is eternal. Your consciousness, your soul, your energy, whatever you want to call it is eternal and forever will be eternal. And we are learning and we are learning and gaining wisdom about that. So I thank you for joining me. I thank you for being here. If you're interested in your own personalized Miracle Mindset Monday, you're free to go visit my website, awakeningmiracles.org. Even if you do not want to book a reading, go check out all of my different vlogs and blogs about different topics and different things that I have because there is tons of information there. Also, there's tons of replays of different Miracle Mindset Mondays where I've done channelings. There's also channeling blogs. So go and enjoy all there that is there that's being offered for free. And also, you can look at the intuitive tips. I have lots of different things there for you to look at if you're interested in really accessing more of your intuition. And for those of you that follow me on my ACIM support page, I will be there in just a moment to read our lesson for today.